In this video, we're just going to spend some time discussing disk structure since we're at a point where we're going to have to start interacting with the disk in our operating system. Now, the stuff that I discuss is going to use hard disk terminology, so like hard drives, but uh, a lot of computers nowadays are using things like solid state drives. So you'll see that generally the terminology stays the same and we just sort of abstractly map the ideas over to solid state, even though they don't have a physical disk. So we'll discuss the idea of hard disks and we'll use the terminology for hard disks regardless of what kind of device we're really working with. So when we look at hard disks, we have to understand a little bit about how hard disks are actually structured. And let me just go back there. What we have is we have this idea of some disks that are like stacked on top of each other. And each of these disks are called a platter. And a platter will have two heads. The heads are the top side of the disk and the bottom side of the disk. Both sides can have data on them and be written to and read from. So each platter has two heads associated with it. We could have many different heads because we have many different platters. On an actual platter, we divide up everything into these little segments here, which we call tracks. So the track is like the whole space around the disk. And then what we do is we divide up this track into what we call sectors. So this here might be a sector of my track. Sectors can vary in size, and generally this is going to be defined based on your uh, file format. So like in FAT, for instance, you may have a 512 byte sector as an example. And that's generally what we'll use starting up here. It's a 512 byte sector. Now, we could take a look at the tracks over many different disks. So if we take a look at all of the tracks that are kind of stacked on top of each other here, you'll see that if I draw a line between all of them, it creates this kind of like a cylinder shape, right? That is referred to as a cylinder. So a cylinder is like the track on multiple different heads. So the way that we generally would locate data on a disk like this is we would take a look for the actual uh, cylinder that we're in, right? And then we would find the actual platter and head that we need to be on. And then we find the actual segment, which will tell us where our data is actually located. And this is the exact idea of a cylinder head sector. It basically defines a tuffle, which defines the cylinder the head and sector of a piece of data. So we can easily find a data on a hard disk using this type of idea. Now, this type of idea isn't often used because there's another type of addressing called LBA, which is easier to translate over to different kinds of disks like uh, solid state drives and network drives and things that aren't really like a physical disk anymore. But generally, cylinder head sector is still used for things like partitioning as well as older devices. Right now in our operating system, we have a floppy disk as our disk, and that is going to use cylinder head sector. And generally, when we use BIOS based interrupts, we can use the cylinder head sector as our notation for accessing data. But we can also use logical block addressing or LBA. Uh, with linear block addressing, generally, this is going to be like a linear addressing scheme. Okay. All the blocks will be located by integer index. So for instance, the first block might get an index of zero, the next block might get an index of one, and we just sort of continue that pattern. This is easier to abstract away into you know, a more general type of terminology. Now it's possible to convert between both of these different formats. It's important to understand this because we're gonna be having to convert around to use different system calls and different interrupts. So we need to understand how to interact using both. So we can convert a CHS into an LBA. Generally what we do is we take the sector number or the cylinder number, sector cylinder number C. We multiply it by TH, the total heads on the disk and multiply that by the total sectors on the disk. We add that to the sector head number and we multiply that by the TS, which is the total sectors on the disk. Then we add that to S, the sectors number minus one, that gives us our LBA value. So that's how we get that value. Now, all these different values here, these different parameters are really going to be defined through both our disk as well as our file format. So our file format will generally define how large the sectors are, which would tell us the total number of sectors on the disk. And then from there, we can divide them up into different pieces and give them each numbers and we can get these different variables from that. So that's how those are generally going to work. And you'll see that in more detail when we actually go through the process of working with the BIOS interrupts. Now, the other thing that we want to understand is how do we convert our LBA to CHS? So if I have an LBA, how do I convert it to the cylinders, the heads, and the actual uh, segments themselves? 
what we do is we calculate the LBA divided by the sectors per track. So we take the LBA value divided by sectors per track. We then take the LBA and we modulus it with sectors per track and add one. That gives us our sector. To get our head, we're going to take that LBA divided by sectors per track and we're going to modulus it with number of heads. So we get the remainder, that's going to be the head value. And then finally, to get our actual cylinder, what we're going to do is we're going to do T divided by the number of headers. So we take the LBA divided by sectors per track, divide that by the number of headers or heads on the disk, and that will give us our cylinder. So you see that we can work in both directions with this. And what we're going to see is in the next few videos, we're going to start working with the FAT file format, and we're going to start working with these various different interrupts and working with LBA and CHS. So we'll see this in a lot more detail in the next few videos. So this gives you a nice brief introduction. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.